In this part of the lecture series, I'd like to talk about my research, part of my research, that has taken place in the country of Sri Lanka. This is going to be mostly about the idea of sustainable tanks, water tanks, in Sri Lanka. And part of my research is to look at um, countries and regions and uh, locales that have been sustainable for 500, 1,000, maybe 1,500 years, to see whether there are elements of sustainability in, in these areas that have been lost in the rush towards modernity and postmodernity. Sri Lanka is a country um, just offshore from India, or maybe India is offshore from Sri Lanka, if that's what Sri Lankans might well say. Um, it is a very, very beautiful country. It, um, is mostly a Buddhist country, although there are what's called Tamils, who are um, a form of uh, Hinduism uh, in Sri Lanka, Catholics, and um, who probably derived in part from the uh, colonial days when the Portuguese and the Dutch were the overlords of Sri Lanka, and a um, substantial English-speaking population because the British ruled Sri Lanka for a couple of hundred years. Because the population is uh, so mixed, even though it's a pr prominently a Buddhist population, there has been all kinds of political trouble. You may have heard there was a civil war in Sri Lanka in the early 2000s, and the country has been recovering from that uh, ever since. But what I want to talk about today is a very, very long history and this long history goes back at least 1,500 years and gave the people of Sri Lanka a legacy of water. What happened was, roughly speaking, about 1,500 years ago, a range of kings and princes and nobles in, in Sri Lanka took a, an already existing array of wells and ponds that people had been generating um, in villages all the way through northern Sri Lanka. Sri, northern Sri Lanka is a very dry area and the villages and the towns in the areas had, as it were, um, small ponds and water courses that they uh, used, um, particularly when the drought periods happened between the monsoons. And again, about 1500 years ago, this was more uh, formalized, it was more organized, and so there were water ponds, eight, nine, ten acres, uh, and some much, much larger that were uh, built, dug out, uh, dug out from the ground, uh, all the way through northern Sri Lanka. Linked together in some ways by uh, canals and other uh, rivers, and uh, they were put together with uh, sluices. These are ways of managing the water between uh, one uh, pond and another. And villages grew up around these um, uh, ponds, the ones that hadn't been already have villages around them. And the whole of northern Sri Lanka is honeycombed with these, with these um, ponds. So part of my research has been to look at these ponds. Again, these ponds have survived. There are thousands of them in northern Sri Lanka. There are villages around them, and these villages manage these ponds. And these ponds are part of the beauty of Sri Lanka. The um, way in which these um, water um, ponds um, have remained sustainable is in part due to the management, a three-part sustainable management, which I call a kind of triangular management, which involves the villages, because the villages have rice fields and other fields that use the water from the ponds uh, to grow the rice and so on. There are also associated with these ponds jungle lands around the ponds, some of it cultivated, some of it not so cultivated. And the villages are run by village elders. These village elders um, usually, very often, have to um, be in contact with and to negotiate with and discuss with the Buddhist monks most villages have a have a Buddhist temple nearby or in the, in the area, and also um, to consider how the environment is doing around this area. So there has been a uh, a village 
Buddhist water ecology a network that has developed around each of these or many of these tanks in northern Sri Lanka. Again, the core area, the core thing are these water tanks. These water tanks are maybe um, 20, 30 acres, just depends, some smaller ones, bigger ones. They have um, a border around them, which is usually uh, a kind of semi-earthen dam. Uh, or something that holds sluice gates between the, the water and the rice fields and so on. The ponds are used for all kinds of purposes. They're used for people to swim in, people to wash in, people to go fishing in. They are used by the animals in the area. Sri Lanka still has a substantial a jungle population of elephants, and herons and other uh, wild creatures that are part of the whole community that the, um, the uh, water tanks support. There are issues with uh, these tanks. One of them is that um, there are aquatic plants that tend to clog up some of these tanks. One of the other things that's going on now is that some people are have been trying to um, as it were, organize and engineer larger tanks, and these tend to be encroaching on the smaller tanks that have been there for a very long time. There's increasing pollution from runoff from uh, farms in the area. There's an extraordinary pesticide problem as people have moved into modern farming. There's also been issues between the Buddhist temples, the villages, and so on, as things have become more and more modernized. It used to be the case that there were um, very um, sophisticated rituals throughout the whole of the calendar year, and some of these have, have disappeared, some of them have been maintained, and this is just part of the modernization that has been going on in, in Sri Lanka. But by and large, they still maintain a kind of uh, central, sustainable, um, management in all of these hundreds, thousands of tanks. Um, and part of my research has been to actually point out and show on an international level that these are in fact models of sustainability. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning, there have been uh, disturbances and a civil war in Sri Lanka. The northern part of Sri Lanka, which is where most of these tanks are, is um, populated by both the Buddhist um, communities but also Tamil Hindu communities and during the Civil War um, there was a lot of battles and murders and uh, struggles and um, attacks on villages uh, from both sides in during the Civil War which again the Sri Lanka has been recovering from and have damaged some of these uh, water tanks. Still, overall, the tanks in Sri Lanka are an extraordinary survival of sustainability. There are also these kinds of water tanks in other countries. India is a good example, and elsewhere in South and Southeast Asia. And they themselves are a model of what smaller scale sustainability in um, relatively poor countries can actually attain ecologically.